Hello, curiously creative comic strip artists. I hope you're enjoying the process of creating your very own comic strip, and I have a quick question for you. Can anyone tell me what this is called? No, I can't hear you, because it's a video. This is called a word balloon, and word balloons appear in every comic strip, and your comic strip should look something like this at this point. We've outlined the pencil lines in thick black permanent ink so that they cannot be erased, and now we're ready for color. And coloring the comic strip is one of my favorite parts because it just brings the comic strip to a whole nother level visually for the viewer, much more exciting to look at. And historically, the reason why some comic strips were in black and white and some were in color is because comic strip artists in the past have featured their comic strips in the newspaper. And that still happens today, but comic strip artists also feature their work online today. So it's the newspaper and online today. So in the past, when comic strip artists would feature their work in the newspaper, Monday through Saturday would be a short, usually around four panels, black and white comic strip. But on Sunday, which is usually the biggest edition of a newspaper, the largest, they would have a much larger comic strip and in full color. And Bill Watterson, who was our first inspirational artist, who did Calvin and Hobbes, has some examples of that for us today to look at. And I'm gonna hold this steady and you can pause the video and look at this on your own time. But here's three examples of daily black and white comic strips. And then here, here is an example of a Sunday comic strip. And again, you can pause this and look at this on your own time. But doesn't the color comic strip just really seems so much more vibrant and more interesting to look at. And the story usually tends to be longer too because there's more panels. There's more panels to tell the story. We're doing kind of an in-between where we're doing four panels, but we're gonna color it in. So there are two ways that you can color in your comic strip and I'm gonna show you them both today. And you get to choose which way you can do it. The first way is the original way comic strip artists used to color in their comic strips, which is by hand, before the computer. So we're gonna color in our comic strip with colored markers or colored pencils, whichever you have. I'm gonna use colored pencils. And again, this is the original way comic strips were colored before the computer. And the second way is on the computer in Photoshop. You'll need access to a computer and Photoshop to do this. But if you don't have access to those things, don't worry. You can color in your comic strip the original way, by hand, like I'm gonna show you. So those are your two options. And at the end of this lesson, you'll know how to color in your comic strip. So let's get started. So before we get started, you'll need a few things. You'll need an eraser. Remember, this is a kneaded eraser. It's like silly putty, kind of. But you can use any type of eraser you have like an eraser that you find on the back of a pencil. A pencil sharpener, here's mine, it opens and closes, and the shavings go in the bottom. And you'll need colored pencils or colored markers, whichever you prefer. I am using colored pencils. I just wanted to show you how sharp I've made the, the tips of the colored pencils so that I can color in the fine detail here. And finally, you'll need a couple sheets of paper to put underneath your comic strip so that when you color in your comic strip, it won't pick up any texture from the table or the surface that you're, you're coloring on. You can see this wood grain on the table that I'm coloring on, and if I didn't have paper underneath my comic strip, we would see that texture. You would see those lines in the color. So that is everything you need. So let's get started.
So now you know how to color in your comic strip by hand, the original way the comic strip artists used to do it before the computer. You can do it this way, or you can do it on the computer in Photoshop, which is what I'm going to show you next. So I'm going to show you how to bring your comic strip into Photoshop. Clean up the lines, separate the black line from the background, color in your comic strip, and then replace the type if you'd like to. Now before I get started, I just want to say that I'm going to go very quickly because there's a lot of details and I want to keep this demo as short as possible for you. I don't want you to get bored. But if I'm going too quickly, you can always pause, rewind, and revisit a section. Also, this demo does assume that you know a little bit about Photoshop, and if you don't, that's okay. Now is a great time to learn about the tools and learn about how to make masks and selections, and there's a lot of tutorials in Photoshop for you to do that. I can't add that to this demo, otherwise this demo would be like four hours long, and I, and I don't want you to get bored again. So I'm going to focus just on what you need to know to get your image polished, uh, to get it cleaned up so that you can color it and, um, and get your comic strip going. So again, you can rewind if I'm going too quickly. Also, I'm going to be doing a lot of keyboard shortcuts, so please take this time to look at your keyboard. Find the spacebar, the command keys, the option keys, the control keys, shift keys, tab, the arrow keys, return. All of these are going to be important because I use the shortcuts in Photoshop and I hope you will too because it's much more efficient. So let's get started. We'll open Photoshop. It's already open. And I'm going to take my image. Let me just open this really quick. This is a photo I took of my comic strip. You can see that it's not pure black and white. We want to clean it up. So we're bringing it into Photoshop right now. Okay, so hit tab and you'll see your windows come up. And hit F on the keyboard or you can click over here, which is a changing the screen mode. We're going to go to image, rotation 90 degrees counterclockwise. Okay, and zoom in. You zoom with space and command and dragging to the right and then to the left zooms out or space command option zooms out space and command zooms in layers palette double clicking our layer and labeling it I'm going to duplicate that by dragging that down to the plus below we're going to shut this layer off. Actually, we're going to lock it first, then shut it off so we always have one to go back to. If you want to edit the name, you double click the name of the layer. We're going to make adjustment layers. Go down here to this black and white circle. First one we're going to do is black and white. See what that did? That added this black and white layer adjustment. If I click the eye, it turns it on and off. So black and white. Another one. That we're going to do is brightness contrast. We're going to increase the brightness. We're going to increase the contrast. And already the whites are getting really clear. The, the whites are getting really white and the, the blacks are getting very dark, which is which is what we want. And one more. So that's that layer and that layer. See we just added adjustment layers there. Again I'm going really quickly because I don't want this to be a long demo, I don't want you to be bored. And this levels, I'm taking this black arrow and I'm moving it in toward the center which makes the blacks blacker, and I'm taking this white arrow and I'm moving it in toward the center which makes the whites whiter. And there's a balance because we don't want the, the words to totally disappear, so you'll have to experiment with that a little bit. After that I'm going to add a layer here, I'm going to double click the name and rename it as white. I'm going to press B on the keyboard or go here for the brush, the brush tool. And I'm going to control click anywhere and I'm going to make my brush 25 pixels wide and the hardness 100. Down here to zero makes it really soft and blurry like this, but hardness, 100 hardness makes it like this. So I want it to be hard, hard edge 25 pixels. We're going to zoom in. I'm going to control click because I want that to actually be bigger. I can get a preview here. Let's make it even bigger. Okay. White. Just like that. So now we've added a layer 
where we've painted in some white over the black. And drag a guide if you go to the ruler and drag that down. Go to view lock guides so it doesn't move on you. If you notice by that guide you can see that our comic is a little crooked so we're going to transform it. Command T is a transform then you take the center part and you put the center part right where the guide meets meets the, the right corner and then go all the way far away over to here to where you the arrow becomes two two arrows kind of like this. We'll zoom in while we're transforming it. See what we're doing? We're rotating it down so that it hits that guide and double checking. And once everything looks good, hit return on your keyboard. See this sliver of transparent pixels? We're going to fix that. At the bottom of all this, select the lowest layer and then select the layer adjustment and go solid color and then grayscale slider and white. Okay, and we're going to hit OK. Rename this, this is going to be white. So that, that transparent went away because we have behind all the layers is now white. Okay, good. Now I want to make this a little bit darker. I want my darks to be just a little bit darker. Okay. darker okay there we go oh, you know what see that changed that okay so it is a little bit of trial and error brightness there we go okay all right so now it's clean now the black lines are black the white is clean and now we're ready to start coloring in the comic strip now before we move on we want to hit command option I up image size, make sure resample is not checked, and hit change to 72 to 300. Okay, good. Now we're going to select all these layers. They're just selected when they're dark gray. Click the folder icon and call this original layers. Okay, and make sure that we save. Make sure you keep the .psd and, and label it whatever you'd like. I, I called it Mr. Ashley Comic Strip. It's important to save so you don't lose your work. Now we want to select just the black so we're going to select the wand tool by hitting W or over here. Click the white, select the original layers folder, press option and while you're pressing option click the mask icon and look what that did. That created a mask based off that selection and so now the black is isolated. The black is separated from the white in the background. And that's exactly what we wanted. Okay? So it's a little bit little bit thin there. So what we're going to do, we're going to press command and click on the mask and that selects the mask. If you press option and click on the mask, this is actually what the mask looks like. Option click again and we get back to the normal view. So what we're going to do is create a new layer Call this black outline. Press D for the default colors, black and white, and X swaps the foreground and background color. So black in the front. We're going to fill our selection on the black outline layer by pressing Option Delete. Okay? And if we look down, now that's a lot more solid. So to double check, I'm going to hit Command Z, which undoes your last move and then I'm going to press command shift Z and go back just to double check. All right so now over here I'm going to make a selection by pressing M and delete that from the we're on the black outline layer right now. I'm going to delete that, delete that. Okay at this point we can shut off the original layers layer so right now we just have the black outline and that's all we need right now. We're going to create another solid color layer. It's just going to be white. Call it white. And we can move original layers down 
and make sure that, that the eye is unclicked. We don't need it anymore. But we want to save the file so we can always go back. So here's white. And so now we have our black outline and the white layer. And now we're ready to color in. And I'm going to show you that and I'm going to speed through that part. But what you, what you need to know, what's most important, is that we're going to make a group by clicking the folder icon down here. Call it Colors. And in that group will be separate layers. And each layer, I'm going to go to the Colors. And I'm going to select a, a beige, beige color, Something like that. OK. select a beige color and each layer will have its own color okay and option delete to fill that all right now that's just going to be the background I'm going to keep coloring in and, and I'll show you that in a minute but the point is um, let's just really quickly show you so maybe this would be white and then I would make a selection behind Remember, we're below this black line, so, and white has its own layer, and of course I'm going to have to fill this in, and I'm going to do that in a second. But each color gets its own layer, okay, and they all stay in the colors folder, and all of those stay under the black outline. So one of the best ways to color a section is press L or go over to your lasso tool, press and hold on that, and then go to the polygonal lasso tool. So what we can do then is let's say for this, this ruby, we want to click. Every time I click, the selection stops at a point. So I'm making a selection right now, and I'm clicking, 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 clicking click and then you double click and then you see the the selection and I'm going to make a oops I'm going to make a layer called red and I'm going to select a red some more over here layers red and option delete option delete fills in your foreground color and now that's red see how quick that was and I made that selection show it to you again that selection behind the black because remember the black outline is above the color okay so now I'm gonna color this in and you'll do the same based on what I've shown you but I'll fast forward this for you and here we go
Okay, so I'm finished coloring in my comic strip, and I want to replace my hand-drawn type here with type from Photoshop. So what I'm going to do is, see it's this black outline, we shut off all the other layers, this is the, the layer that we made that has the type, so what we're going to do, we're going to make a mask by selecting black outline, clicking the mask button, and then drawing a selection. Okay, filling in with black. So see what we did, that's the mask. By option clicking the mask, you can see it, and by option clicking again, you can come back. I'm just going to do this for one, for one uh, panel, and then I'm going to fast forward this for you. But um, I'm going to shift click the mask so I can actually see what this says. I'm going to select colors and above it, I'm going to select colors and then hit the folder icon and that'll create a group above it and I'm going to call this type and I'm going to press T on the keyboard to go over to T and select anywhere on the canvas and start typing what I see below. Okay, so when you're done typing, you can hit enter on your keyboard or click or click elsewhere in the layer palette. I usually press enter on my keyboard. So when you want to edit this, when you want to change how this looks, double click the T on the type layer and you have it all highlighted and all up here along here are your options of things to change and if you press this icon, this little folder icon, you get the character palette or window and here, you, this is the letting right here, if you hover your mouse over it'll tell you it has set the letting so right now it's at 75 pixels, we'll try 80 go back to 75, see how that changes that and then over here is the size of the type, we'll go 70 and actually I like 60. And then right here, the two capital T's, this makes everything you type all caps. I usually do that. So I, I recommend selecting that. You can deselect it and then it's lowercase, but I, I usually leave that on. So that's what I've done. And uh, you can do the same if you'd like. Shift click the mask for black outline so we don't see it anymore. Press V for the arrow tool. Click on the type and shift drag. Shift drag is when you press shift and then click and drag at the same time. And what that does is it keeps it in a straight line. See those pink lines? That means it's staying in the same line with everything else. Okay, so that fits pretty well. You can use the arrows on the keyboard to move those around. And now I'm going to fast forward this for you and finish this. And you can also, uh, by the way, when you double click the, the T in the type layer, you can change the font based on the fonts that you have. Okay, so it's up to you. All right, I'm gonna fast forward this and finish this up. Okay, so I've finished typing up my comic strip, and I want to make one final adjustment, and I want to show you how to do it too. In the type folder, select all the layers, and up here you'll see these alignment uh, tools, alignment buttons. Click the one that says align top edges, and you'll notice, I'm going to do command Z so you can see it again, when I do that, all the tops align so they all start in the same spot and now since all the layers are highlighted I'm going to use the arrows on the keyboard to just tick them down a little bit and it won't be won't be perfect because the spacing is a, is a little bit off it is trial and error all right let's do that one more time align this 
Okay. Save by hitting Command S. And now your comic strip is finished. Now we want to create a JPEG so that we can share it. Command Shift S or Save As, Desktop, JPEG, Save. 12 maximum, OK. Close this. Here's your JPEG. We're going to double click it. And there is your comic strip. Now your comic strip is complete. Great job. Remember, you can always rewind and review certain sections of this demo if it was a little bit fast. But now that you have your JPEG, you'll be able to share it digitally, which is something we'll talk about next time. Whether this was the first comic strip you've made or not, I hope it won't be the last comic strip that you ever make, because now you know the process, and you can keep building your comic strip and building out the lives of the characters within your comic strip, different adventures and situations. I hope you found this interesting, and until next time, keep being creative.